That haze you've been seeing this summer from wildfire smoke and pollution is causing more negative health effects than respiratory or headaches. And that extreme heat that we're feeling can also make it worse. It's a reminder of the way climate change can threaten our overall health and that heat is taking a toll on our brains and body. Joining us with more to explain is Dr. Winnie Armand, the Associate Director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Center for Environment and Health. Good morning. Good morning. So we know that breathing in smoke can harm our respiratory health, but what kind of effect can climate change have on our mental health? That's a great question. There's a number of ways that climate change can affect our well-being and our mental health. Um, just with increasing heat, uh, we all can get kind of fusty. I, I think I certainly have been less uh, patient with the heat, but it actually can exacerbate mental illness, depression. Uh, we also see more aggression and suicide and intense heat. Not only that, people who are on medications for um, psychiatric illnesses oftentimes have less ability to uh, thermoregulate because of the medications they're on. So there's a number of ways. Uh, also stress, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder after a number of extreme weather events can also be something unfortunately that we see. And medically, what's the connection between those two? So if you have an event where it's extremely uh, stressful, like you're suffering through wildfires, you lose your home, uh, you are in a flood, um, all these things can cause uh, a stress that is chronic that even persists beyond the actual event and it can lead to a lot of anxiety and as you can imagine a lot of un, uh, uh, anxiety about what can happen in the future, reliving the event, etc. There's also increasing research into the effects of climate change on skin conditions. What do we know so far about how that's affected? Yeah, there's a number of ways. First, you can think about skin cancers with more UV exposure. Uh, when it's getting warmer, people are outside more often and maybe wearing less clothes. So we are seeing more skin cancers. In addition to that, with climate change and air pollution, as you've mentioned, we do see more incidence of diseases like eczema. We also see flares of skin diseases like eczema, psoriasis. And part of that is because our skin is part of the barrier that protects us from the environment. And so these pollutants can then damage that barrier and can set off a cascade of changes in our immune system. Heat-related deaths have more than doubled compared to the rates that we saw back in the 90s, and climate change we know is a global phenomenon. So how can we protect ourselves from these effects? Very important question. I think first being aware, so understanding what can happen with heat. And also certain individuals are more at risk. So knowing what your individual risk is are, are very important. Staying alert to your regional um, public health officials, knowing when you are in a region that is going to have high um, heat index is important and knowing where to go and what to do. So how to stay safe, whether it's um, being in a cool place if you, and finding a, another place if you don't have air conditioning. Uh, also, if you have to be outdoors, trying to limit the time that you are under the sun, seeking shade, also drinking plenty of water if, uh, if you're uh, to prevent dehydration, and certainly looking out for others, um, uh, checking on others who might be more vulnerable to protect those in our community. Dr. Winnie Armand, thanks so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. If you like that video, make sure to subscribe to the Your Morning YouTube feed, where you can find all kinds of new content posted every weekday morning.